Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fanshawe College's virtual open house. My name is Dave Anderson, and I work in the Reputation and Brand Management Department at Fanshawe. I'll be the host for today's session. I am joined by Carmen Hall and Jocelyn Prosser, and today we're going to be talking about autism and behavioral science. Uh, before we start, I just have a couple housekeeping items to review. Uh, the audience webcams and mics are turned off for the session, so don't worry, we're not watching you and we can't hear anything going on. If you have any questions throughout the session, it's super easy to send them in by using the questions feature. To access the question features, just click on the question mark and type away. I'll gather in your submitted questions during the presentation for the Q&A portion at the end of the session. We will try our best to get through all the submitted questions within the session time. Uh, if you're looking for more information after the session, we'll provide you with contact information on how to book an appointment with one of our Fanshawe College recruiters. Lastly, if you happen to have multiple programs open and running, it may compromise your webinar experience. So we recommend you take a moment now to close any open programs before we begin. Once again, I'd like to introduce Carmen and Jocelyn. We'll be talking to you about autism and behavioral science. Take it away. Excellent. Thanks, Dave. So we wanted to start with some facts about the prevalence of autism in uh, Ontario and beyond. So in Canada, one in 66 children um, have autism. So I think the one thing we hear all the time from people is I'm hearing about autism more and more. And our program was created about 12 years ago um, as the incident rate started. So when I had started in um, 2004 in the field, the prevalence rate was one in 165. So um, we do have lots of job opportunities available. So that works out to one to 2% of the Canadian population that has autism. And putting that into numbers, 135,000 Ontarians have autism. So children and adults. So our program started really as how to train instructors how to work with young children with autism in early intervention. However, we teach across the lifespan. So we are a one-year graduate certificate program. And what that means is you come to our program once you've completed an undergrad or a diploma program in the human services areas. We have a standardized curriculum across all the colleges, which is excellent in that the Ministry of Children and Youth Services, which it was called at the time, had created our curriculum. So we're very similar to other colleges um, across the province, but some of the way we deliver differentiates us. Um, Jocelyn and myself, as well as, the, well as other faculty who teach in the program, we have experience in what's called applied behavior analysis, which is shown to be one of the most evidence-based ways of an effective treatments to work with children with autism. You probably have heard um, about autism ABA therapy for children with autism in the news and the media. So what is the admission requirement? So you need a degree, an undergraduate degree in psychology or sociology. Um, now that uh, doesn't necessarily have to be the case. We can also take undergraduates in social work, uh, education, um, child and youth studies, or if you have, um, you know, more of a general arts uh, background, we look for 10 half courses in um, those, one of those areas. We're really wanting you to come in with a background in child and developmental uh, psychology or uh, development of children in general, because we jump off of that and go into the autism spectrum and how that differs from typical child development once you enter our program. Also acceptable is a diploma, and the most common um, areas in the human service, the most common diplomas are developmental service worker, social service worker, early childhood education, or child and youth care. So how many students do we take each year? Approximately 75. Um, all of our programs do start in September. We have two cohorts, so I am the coordinator of the Autism and Behavior Science weekday program. So primarily that is Monday to Friday, and that's over two semesters. So you start in September and you end at the end of April. Jocelyn's the coordinator of the online program, which is over 12 months. Um, the synchronous components that are offered online are usually in the evenings and the weekends, so we have tailored it for into people who are also working in the field. 
Um, what are we offer? So we are training individuals in a higher level of knowledge and application to work with people with autism spectrum disorder, as I mentioned, across the lifespan, and as well implement the science of applied behavior analysis. So this is really the behavioral psychology background um, that helps us um, uh, was one of, one of the evidence-based ways that we work with individuals, and it really breaks things down um, into small chunks in order for individuals to grasp. Um, so, as I mentioned, really it's about applying, here's the, uh, the big definition, experimental derived principles to improve socially significant behaviors. So we do work on a lot of different things uh, of teaching, including language, social skills, um, community life skills, as well as um, everything in between. So we work collaboratively with families and um, other professionals to help uh, really get a base of things that are important to them, as well as increasing skills. We also decrease challenging behaviors. So I'm going to turn it over to Jocelyn now, who's going to talk a little bit about our specific course sequence in both offerings of our program. Awesome. Thanks, Carmen. So in our weekday sequence, that's our eight month long program. You're gonna take five classes in semester one, followed by field placement. And our semester one classes are uh, foundational knowledge of some of the things that you'll need in order to be able to advance your knowledge into semester two. So it's a bit of an introductory semester we talk we talk about you know what is asd what is aba how do we work with families and teams you have a chance to go out on field placement for 140 hours at the end of your semester and then we move into semester two where we are doing some more building or culminating tasks so we're talking about how do we apply those concepts into treating challenging behaviors or behavioral skill building parent and staff training those are some of the courses and then you finish up with another field placement of 210 hours where you're now applying all of those concepts that we talked about in class. Our online sequence is a little bit different because it is spread, over, spread out over more time. So in semester one, sorry, I should mention they are identical courses. Our faculty is um, really great at making sure that we're delivering our weekday program and our online program uh, very similarly. So the content you'll get in either program is identical. How you take those courses is just split apart a little bit differently. So this is a three semester course versus a two semester course. Um, it has some of the classes in semester one and then two more academic classes in semester two plus your first field placement and then in your summer we actually divide it up a little bit um, and it's not quite written this way on the slide but you'll take two academic courses in the first two months and then you'll finish those and you'll take the other two academic classes in the second two months of the semester and then your field placement will happen in there as well. A big question we get asked often are, you know, what, what jobs can I get after this program? And the reality is, uh, I feel like they keep growing and growing. So often certification in this program leads to jobs within our school board. So some people are thinking, I know I want to be an EA in the school board, and this program would certainly help you to be able to do that. We also have heard, and we know from a, certainly our local school boards here in London, that there are certain EA or specialized EAs on the behavior teams, and they actually require the certification in the Autism and Behavior Science program to be able to um, acquire that job. So, very specific set of few people get to have that opportunity within the school board and then there's lots of opportunities within our community there's community-based treatment there's uh, supporting uh, adults and children uh, in in variety of different ways um i'm not sure carmen i don't know if you want to add anything more to that i'm just gonna there's there's so many <laughs> it's hard to keep track of them 
So I think when our program started, um, we primarily trained individuals to do what was called intensive behavior intervention. And when you hear about it in the media about doing early intervention with children, that is what they're referring to is IBI, which is one of the most um, funded um, treatments that's available to children. So it's very specialized, it's very intense, um, it involves a lot of um, repetition of things, but we do it in lots of fun ways. In the past, it used to be more at the table. So a lot of people um, that does uh, pique their interest in why they get into our program, and both Jocelyn and I do have a background in uh, doing um, IBI work. However, as you may have also heard, is that we um, are also supporting children, um, older children as well, in applied behavior analysis in schools. Um, who are going to school and they might go to groups or have different activities outside of the school hours. And as well, um, more and more, we're supporting adults. And especially in the London community, Jocelyn and I have worked um, over the last four years in creating groups for adults um, and helping agencies in the community uh, with different day programs and different offerings so that we are implementing more skill building programs and learning programs and how teaching individuals how to decrease challenging behaviors. So um, although the DSW field and supporting in adults um, in various different ways is a big part of working with adults, we've really been um, trying to help um, individuals. And when we are face-to-face, -face, um, we do offer students opportunities where adults, mostly adults, sometimes we have some small times with children, although them at the college can be a lot of work, um, where we have adults who come to college and come to part, be part of our classes, where we practice our ABA skills and what it might look like when you work with adults. And, um, and then the individuals with developmental disabilities and autism also get an opportunity to come to college, even though they might not typically get that opportunity. Awesome, thank you. And then just a couple of additional notes that uh, we often get asked. So both of the programs, either our day program or our, week, our, our online program are considered full-time. And so if you are inquiring about financial aid or OSAP, both would be eligible for that funding model. And that's for um, our Canadian students or our Ontario students domestic. And then uh, when can I start applying is the next question. And that is, you can submit your application at any point in time. I do believe registration is now open. And then you would be given admissions to the program on a first come first serve basis starting February 1st. So unlike universities, um, we are just looking for a completion in or graduation in one of those courses that we talked about. And then as the students apply, admissions are offered to students and it stays open until the program is full. Perfect. And I just wanted to talk about a few things that we do at Fanshawe that might be a little bit different um, than some of the other colleges to uh, just in case you're going to different open houses, often when we're face to face doing open house, we have people ask us um, what makes Fanshawe different in terms of the delivery of our program. And so one thing that we are very passionate about is using technology and learning in an applied uh, active learning approach. So um, all of our coursework is done on interactive iBooks. And so they are instructor created. And so in that iBook that you would get for each week of content would be the written information as well as videos of your professor talking about the concept or YouTube videos explaining or demonstrating the concept. And then along with interactive activities all in that one download. So even when we are um, online a bit more right now because of COVID, it's been a really seamless um, transition. So we truly believe, especially for our online offering as well, that students have that opportunity. Along in our classes is a lot of active learning. So um, we don't have as many textbooks. So we only have two textbooks that you're required to purchase for the entire year. The iBooks are provided to you free. And then we do active learning so that the majority of the class, you're, we're helping you apply the concepts. Um, before you go on field placement so that when you attend field placement, you have already done um, 
the information. For example, Jocelyn, maybe you can provide some details on your simulations that you provide um, in some of your courses. Absolutely. So some of the things that we like to do, as Carmen said, is really applying what we're learning. So the other day we were talking about how do we practice our skills in um, receiving feedback from somebody, uh, something that's very hard for everybody to do. And it's really easy for us to just pretend like we know what we're doing in class and to you know, role play. And instead, we've actually set up what we call uh, simulations with a live actor and our students have opportunities to then go in and spend some time with a live actor practicing those skills and that supports their learning even farther than just that role play in the classroom would be so those are some of the creative ways that we are certainly taking the theory or the concepts that we're talking about in the ibooks and then applying them in a very interactive way so students have that hands-on learning. Exactly. And then another way is with our adults with developmental disabilities and some of the programs, um, your class time actually in class is reduced and you have more opportunities to work with the adults and you do your assignments with those individuals. And like we said, that there are opportunities where we've had some respite days um, on a Saturday morning or an evening that we've set up where we have children, um, but sometimes you can't get as much done um, for your assignments when you're working with a three-year-old who's just been diagnosed with autism, for example. They have a lot of energy and they might not um, necessarily have a lot of language, either receptive or expressive language yet. So a lot of our courses are, we do incorporate with um, adults with developmental disabilities and part of your course time is getting to spend time with them and do your assignments with them. So as we mentioned, we really do believe in the active learning approach and that us standing there lecturing isn't necessarily a great um, use of your time with us or potentially a great learning opportunity, given that you're going to be working with children, youth and adults um, who have complex needs and potentially challenging behavior, um, you need some more hands-on skills. But our field placement hours do provide a lot of that as well. So with that, um, this is our contact information here up on the screen. Just um, a reminder that my name is Carmen Hall and I coordinate the weekday program and Jocelyn coordinates the online program. So if you do have any questions, please email us. That's the easiest way to get a hold of us. And we are more than um, happy to chat with you. Many people have questions about the backgrounds, um, your, your undergrad or your diplomas that you have, and we're happy to answer questions if it didn't fit into, specifically to yourself, if it didn't fit in one of those categories that we described today. Carmen, Jocelyn, excellent presentation. Thank you very much. We have a room full of attendees and we have some questions here. If anybody wants to ask a question, uh, please submit it with the questions feature in the GoToWebinar. Uh, we do have a couple questions to go through here. And then after the session, we'll give you some more contact information as well. So the first question uh, is, is autism and behavioral po a postgraduate course? And if yes, is a Nigerian law graduate eligible to a study? Very specific. Okay, yes. <laughs> we do get a lot of questions about entry into the program. So um, it, off the top of our head, law um, might not be a prerequisite for this course. As we mentioned, having a wide variety of background in development and what child development and adult development looks like is really what we're, we're looking for. So that, like I mentioned, we can um, jump off of there and go into more what's specific to autism. Now saying that, um, we do have individuals who apply with a, a degree like law or you know medicine or things like that, but they might have additional courses they've taken in university um, in psychology or sociology or some certificates programs they've taken at universities and colleges. So in combination with a degree, if you have additional courses, we would count those. And like um, we mentioned, um, we're looking for 10 um, kind of half year courses. Um, uh, half, half credit courses, we call them in Canada, um, to uh, say that you do have the breadth of knowledge in development and psychology for, to kind of enter our program. 
Excellent. Okay, so there's a couple of questions about uh, the program timelines. Like, how long is it? Can you take it part time? Maybe you could address some of that. How long does it take, uh, depending on which option you go for? Sure. Do you want me to take this one for me? So there's a, technically there's three options. We only went over two. Um, so we have our traditional weekday program, which is offered Monday to Friday, and that starts in September, ends in April. So that one's eight months long. That one's the one that Carmen's the coordinator for. And then there is our online program, which takes a little bit longer to complete. It starts in September as well and runs all the way through until the end of August. So that one's a full year, 12 months. We also have a part-time program starting in January and we are the coordinators of that program. And it's just a little bit of a different department at Fanshawe, but if you are inquiring about it, we'd be happy to connect you with our part-time coordinator. And in that program, you can kind of take it at your own pace. So the fastest you could complete it is in one year, you'd start in January and end next December. But if you felt like, you know, that was still a little bit too much, you can take smaller chunks of courses over a longer period of time. And you do have seven years to complete the, the course. I'm just gonna go back to that last question, actually, Dave, just to clarify something. Okay. Um, so, the last question was about is it a postgraduate program just to be super clear po ours is a postgraduate certificate and that's what we get from college and that means you have to have a program a degree or a diploma coming into our course very different than a master's program which is a university level course oh, okay excellent all right i have another question here is there only 75 acceptances for online and in class combined or is it 75 for each? What, how, what's the capacity of the program? Great question. Um, so our typical weekday program, our cap actually is 50 students. And then we would have a cap um, for our online program, approximately 30 to 40 students. Um, so our capacity is higher um, to accept closer to 90 students um, in the two cohorts. Um, however, we usually tend, um, after everything kind of shakes out and people make, decide on their offers and whatnot, we usually end up around 75 students each year. This year is a little unique because the numbers flipped a bit because of COVID, but um, right. normally that's what we're, we're looking at. So we do ex uh, provide 50 acceptances in the weekday program. Okay, excellent. Uh, next question. Is there any advantage of transitioning to a master's degree program after completing the AUT1 program at Fanshawe? Excellent. Absolutely, that's a good question. So that's actually the path that I took. I had my university degree and then I came to Fanshawe and I took the Autism and Behavior Science program and that really spiked my interest in applied behavior analysis. And then in Ontario specifically, um, if you have that degree program, prior to coming to the autism program and you really are interested in ABA as a specific topic of interest, both uh, Brock University and Western University have a master's where they study specifically ABA and our graduates typically end up becoming what we call board certified behavior analysts. And so there's certainly a really nice pathway there and this program sets you up beautifully to do well in your master's. Um, now is probably a good time, Carmen, to put a plug in for our degree program. So Carmen is, uh, we are getting a, you know, final word on our behavioral psychology degree that we're going to be offering at Fanshawe. And so for students coming with a diploma background and then moving into the autism program, the idea behind the degree program will be that you will be able to bridge into third year university of a behavioral psychology degree. And then that opens a whole nother set of doors if you were still interested to go on and do your master's. So there's no limitations after we get this behavioral psychology degree to any of our students out there. And just to clarify, that's an undergraduate degree and we would teach it at Fanshawe. Oh, that's fantastic. We're, hope, we're hoping yeah. that, hoping next year if it gets approved off the minister's desk by then. <laughs> right. 
Okay, uh, I see we have about five minutes left in the session. We still have time to answer questions from the audience if you want to submit those using the questions feature in GoToWebinar. Uh, the next one, I'm going to kind of add two questions together because they're somewhat related from the same person. And am I going to graduate with a certificate or a diploma? And is the diploma two years or one? Great question. So this is a certificate. This is a one-year graduate certificate if you take it full-time, um, whether it's eight months or 12 months. You need a diploma before you come into this program or a degree. So you can't enter this program unless you have a diploma or a degree already. So maybe that's what's confusing um, about talking about all of this. So if you don't have a diploma or a degree yet, we often say, um, you know, courses that are really nice transition to ours is a developmental service worker, um, early childhood education are amazing, um, as well as the CYC, the child and youth care, or social service worker, but we get most of our students from the DSW program or the ECE program. Um, once you do your diploma, then you can come into our program for the certificate. Lots of options, lots of pathways, that's great. Um, Here's a question. It has a, an acronym I'm not familiar with. I hope hope you ladies know what it is. Is there is there great support for people with IEPs, I, IEPs, and mental illness to help you through taking the course? Excellent question. So yes, um, if you did have an IEP in a previous college or high school setting, um, we do have a great counseling and accessibility service department at Fanshawe. And so you're definitely, that uh, with that IEP or um, different diagnoses, you could use either as documentation. You would meet with a counselor before our program starts. And that counselor, um, not us, would um, meet with you and talk about what accommodations and strategies that you would need. And then um, every professor in all of your courses would get a uh, email with no identifying information about your IEP or diagnoses. And we would just be told what things we need to accommodate for you in your courses, and we would do that. So I find our system is fantastic at protecting the um, protecting your privacy um, and but delivering um, the information we need. The other thing I feel that's really great at Fanshawe, and I'm sure there might be some sessions on this as well if you wanted to learn more in the open house, because counseling and accessibility usually have a session too, is Fanshawe has so many options. So um, for example, this term, um, I have a few students who are falling behind because of the changes in weather or different mental health um, things that have come up. And we have peer note takers where the counselor um, anonymously emails all the classes and asks if there's any peers who would share their notes. And it gets uploaded to a, a confidential area so that person would never know it's you um, that they're giving them to and you download their notes. Um, we also have peer tutors for $25 a semester. You can have a peer or a graduate from our program who will help you and tutor you through with some of the information. That's great. I, I, wanna, say, uh, I wanna say that on Saturday, there's a whole bunch of these open house uh, seminars for all the different support areas of the college. So that might be a place to go and get more information as well. Right. Um, another question. Uh, if we get the degree, what would be the qualification to get the master's? So if you're talking about the degree that Jocelyn talked about, the, ba the bachelor's undergraduate degree, you would be eligible to sit for what's called a board certified assistant behavior analyst, um, which, is which is different um, than the board certified behavior analyst. So the assistant behavior analyst still needs oversight once you're certified, whereas at the master's level, that's um, a full master's level clinician, which is kind of the the, the the um, ceiling in our uh, area, in our field. And so you would be able to supervise without additional um, supervision for yourself. I know Jocelyn had to run to another, another uh, open house event. Uh, yeah. So we are uh, wrapping it up here. We, we only got a minute left. So I'll end on this question. Can you, can you talk about uh, the different types of jobs that are available when you leave the program? You touched on that a little bit in the, in the session, but whatever else other information you can provide 
Maybe. Yeah, so really we're, we're, we're training people who are direct support professionals working with individuals with autism and other developmental disabilities. So in no way are we focusing purely on autism. There is a big component, um, but we are uh, training people to work with anyone who struggles with learning um, or has behavior challenges. And that's what our field is really helping. And we get lots of consultation and um, to assist in how do we decrease challenging behaviors of many different children, youth and adults. Excellent presentation, excellent questions. Thanks to all the attendees for coming today. Thank you for uh, your presentation, Carmen, and to Jocelyn as well. Um, we hope we answered all your questions. If you have more questions, you can reach out to Carmen or Jocelyn with that information there, or you can contact one of our Fanshawe recruiters at myfuture at fanshawec.ca, or you can actually book an appointment. It's uh, a 30 minute phone call or Zoom session with our recruiters at fanshawc.ca slash connect. Thank you, everybody, and have a wonderful evening.